Good evening, good evening, City of Stonecrest. Happy Thursday. Today is January 11, 2024, and the time now is 6 o'clock on the dot. All right, welcome everyone to our CPIM, Community Plan Information Meeting. Before we dive into business, I'm going to do a quick introduction on staff tonight. I am Trey John Singletary, the Senior Planner within the Planning and Zoning Department. We have our Director, Director Cowie, who is our Director for Planning and Zoning. To my left, we have Ms. Felicia Blair, who is our planner for the department. And last but not least, Ms. Kobe Brown. Um, she is our planning technician for the department. All right, so the purpose and intent for the CPIM is an information meeting that allows staff and applicants to inform the public of upcoming developments and projects. It allows citizens, business owners, and developers uh, the opportunity to review all petitions, ask questions, and express any concerns, bridge the gap between developers, residents, and staff. And this meeting, the CPI meeting, happened every second Thursday of each month. This is just a reminder of the meeting decorum. Please be respectful of applicants, citizens, and staff. Keep questions, comments, and or concerns relevant to the agenda items. Please wait to ask questions after staff has concluded presenting each petition, and each citizen or resident will have the maximum of two minutes to ask his or her question or make their statement. So with that being stated, we're moving into our first petition for tonight, which is RZ23-013. The address is 3580 Evans Mill Road. The applicant, Ms. Heather Loveless, is seeking to rezone the parcel from R100 to R60 to develop a 60 single-family detached units. Just to provide some background and information on this particular property petition, this property is currently undeveloped. It has two street frontages, which is Evans Mill Road and, Ring and Rangsdale Road. Its adjacent properties are all zoned R100, which is medium density residential. And as stated, the applicant desires to develop 60 single family detached units. Here what's being presented on the screen currently is a future land use, or some may know it as character area within the comprehensive plan. This property is set to be RR, which is an acronym for Rural Residential. The current zoning for this particular property is R100, which is an acronym for a medium density residential. This property does reside in the Overlay District, which is Arabia Mountain. Here is the aerial map of the property. As stated, it is undeveloped. Here's the submitted site plan that was submitted by the applicant. And I will zoom in on the next slide. So as stated, this applicant desired to develop 60 single family detached dwelling units. Here is the flow chart that all petitions that would like to rezone the particular property has to go through. So as stated, they went through all of these steps. They are finally located at the CPIM. After the CPIM, followed the planning commission meeting, followed by the mayor and council hearing. We 
with that being stated, can we have the representative for this petition to come up to the podium, please? Just state your first and last name and address for the record. Is the green light is on? Press the green. And just state your first and last name and address for the record. I'm Heather Nicole Loveless. My home address is 627 Shoal Circle in Lartsville, 30046. And the gentleman? Yeah. I'm Charles Loveless, and I'm the registered land surveyor on this project. Uh, my home address is uh, 4680 Wheeler Creek Drive in Houston, Georgia. Awesome, awesome. Is there anything that you would like to add that staff did not go over during our presentation? No, I believe you covered everything that, that's out there, uh, except that we're going to have a large amenity area, which will include walking trails and uh, a whole lot of trees, like are already out there on the site and picnic tables and benches and just amenities for the neighborhood. All right, sounds good, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak for this petition? Yeah, I'm gonna get to that. You can have a seat. Is there anyone that wants to speak in opposition for this petition? Come on up to the podium, ma'am. And if you have a comment card, just leave on the podium and just state your first and last name and address for the record. My name is Cherie Faust, and um, I live at 30, or I own the property at 3351 Wade Road, which is adjacent to this property, I believe. Um, the infrastructure in this area is in no way would support this level of development. It, the roads are narrow and winding, the property basically sits on uh, part of Arabi Mountain. It's rock. And I don't know how they would manage to get that property to per properly. I don't know if the county is prepared to put in sewers. Um, I just don't think this is well advised for that level of density. Thank you so much for your comments. My name is Timothy Jackson. <clears throat> I live at 3490 Evans Mill Road, Lithonia, Georgia, which is right next to that property, but it was like one house between it and that property on Evans Mill Road. And uh, I'm sure that they, like she said, that all that land behind there where they're talking about building on is all rock, it's granite. So they're probably gonna have to do blasting and all that stuff, and it's gonna wreck houses right in that area. So it would be a very bad idea for to have this project go on. And that's pretty much all I got to say. And I'm probably going to have a lot of heavy equipment and stuff coming through there and stuff like that. So it's just not equipped for that area. Thank you so much for your comment. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? All right, is there anyone else that have any questions? Opposition, go ahead. There's a couple of things about this property. First, looking at the site plan, and I am Dave Marcus, 6501 Rockland Road, about a um, mile and a half from there or so. Uh, houses in that area are not built on R60, they're built on R100. On Evans Mill, we have some million dollar homes, maybe half a mile down. We have the proposed Templarius project on Rockland and Evans Mill, which will start at 700,000. We have Trinity Estates off Rockland near Evans Mill that seem to sell for between 500,000 and a million. I don't know what these are gonna sell for, but looking at it, it's just another subdivision. It's just another slightly crowded subdivision with, we understand walking trails, which is just what we need at Arabia Mountain because we don't have any. Wait a minute. Sorry, being sarcastic. Um, more of concern, though, is that this is in the Arabian Mountain overlay. 
And a very quick look at that site plan makes me really question whether the developer has examined the requirements of the Arabia Mountain Overlay in terms of the percentage of land that can be cleared and graded and the percentage of land that can be built on. It doesn't look like it would fit there. Uh, if we were just asking questions, I'd ask if they had done an alternate site plan using the cluster option for Arabia Mountain developments, and if so, how many houses that would support. I'd also like to know how many houses it would support at R100 as currently zoned. In general, we're getting a lot of development. We need development. We need expansion of the economic base of the city, but we need to put the right to development in the right place. And this does not seem in any way the right place for R60. So combination of questions and opposition. Gotcha. And the applicant, you can come up to address the question or answer the question that the gentleman had. Um, I li I'd like to have a little more information on R100 density uh, because I believe that our density requirements are less than what an R100 zoning would allow. Uh, we, we're, we're trying to rezone to R60, but uh, we're going in the flavor of R100, which the current property is already currently zoned. Um, yeah, we we did do a, a plan with the cluster option, and it just wasn't uh, viable for us. So that's why we went to this. That's why we went to this plan. Uh, I I don't know specifically any other answers to any of the other questions. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any other community members that would like to speak in opposition or for this petition or have any additional questions? All right, with that uh, being none, staff, do we have any questions for the applicant? All right, hearing none, thank you all so much. Um, the next meeting is scheduled for February 6th, which is for the Planning Commission hearing followed by mayor and council hearing, which is scheduled for February 26th. Both will be here at this location in the exact same room at six o'clock. Thank you so much. All right, so now we move into our next petition for today's agenda, which is SLUP 23-015. The address is 3153 Pequee Drive. Ms. Uh, Washington of the Garden Stone Crest LLC is seeking a special land use permit to operate a personal care home. Some facts and background on this petition. Um, the property is currently developed. It has an existing structure dwelling, which is currently on the site. And this particular property is um, four bedrooms and three baths currently. And that is something that staff will have to make sure that is accurate. The future land use, us or some may know as character area within the compass of plan, set this property to be SN, which is an acronym for, sub for suburban neighborhood. And the star represents the lo location. The current zoning for this particular property is R100, which is an acronym for residential medium lot. Here is the area map of the property. Here are some site photos of the property.
Here's your submitted floor layout of the interior of the property. And just provide some more clarification, the image on the left is the main level. The image on the right is the second level. Here in section 4.1.3, which is entitled Use Table, if someone would like to open or operate a personal care home within the R100 zoning district, up to uh, up to six is allowed by way of a special um a special land use permit, and the operator or the operator wants to do more than seven, that is not permitted within this district. So as stated, the applicant is seeking a special land use to operate a personal care home of six or less by code. But we'll get the come. Here in section 4.2.41, which is entitled Personal Care Homes and Child Care Institutions, it provides supplemental regulations that the applicant must abide by to operate a personal care home. Similar to the rezoning process, this is a flow chart for the special land use permit process. As stated, the applicant did go through this entire process. Now they are located at the CPIM, followed by the Planning Commission, followed by the Mayor and Council hearing. With that being stated, Ms. Washington, please come up to the podium. State your first and last name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Tajma Washington. Tajma like Taj Mahal. Yes. An address? Uh, 3153 Pequia Drive, uh, Stonecrest, Georgia. All right. Is there anything that you would like to add or clarify that staff did not go over? Um, you covered everything. Is this is a split level home? Um where I will be uh, residing in the uh, ground level, in the main level, uh, the residents will be in um, up to four, as my goal to house up to four uh, uh, challenged independent living individuals. All right, so just to clarify, you will reside on a property. Yes, I will. And your maximum is four. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Washington. You may have a seat. Is there any community member who would like to speak in for this position? Anyone that would like to speak for this petition? Would like to speak for this petition? Yes. Are there any community members that would like to support speaking for in favor? question okay i get to you all right is there anyone like to speak in opposition for this petition anyone that would like to speak in opposition for this petition come on up to the podium ma'am if you have a comment card leave it on the podium and then just state your first and last name and address for the record okay once you get done speaking just fill out that form that's right there to your right Laura M. Howell. My address is 3146 Pequot Drive on the property there. And I'd like to know um, more about the intent of um, the lady that just spoke. I know she said four people, four people, uh, the personal care home. What is the extent of the personal care that she would be giving, would she be the only person in the house? Would there be CNAs there? Would there be uh, medical staff there? Would there be other people to, to care for these people? And also, um, 
if she would she be the only person there? Would this be a 24 seven um, our establishment or what? Gotcha. All right. At this point, you, you know, my, she stated that she would be living there. Uh, so my question is, is she an owner of the property or is she renting the property? All right. Thank you so much for your question. Um, is there anyone like to speak in opposition or have a question for this petition? Come on up, ma'am. Ms. Washington, just write down the question. Please come back. Good evening. My name is Susan Washington. I live at 5345 Cayuga Court in Stonecrest. And I have a question. Who manages the number of residents that's going to be in there? She said four, it could be up to six. Who manages that? Could it could it go up to seven? Um, how is the resident being used as, as of this date right now? And how would that facility affect the value of our homes? As you know, we are now, you don't know, but in our subdivision, um, and I've been there 38 years, there are rooming houses there, there are renters there, and our value of our homes are going down. And that's a concern of me and not only me, other residents in the community. So that's my concern. All righty. Thank you so much for your comment and question. Jennifer Capers, um, 5329 Winslow Crossing North. Um, I'm in the community. Um, you answered some of the questions um, that she would be residing there. Um, I'm, I, I need more specifics on exactly what kind of care. Is it for elderly? Is it for disabled? Is it for children? Or, you know, there's so many different types of care. I just wanted to want more specifics on that. And yes, I am um, in real estate, so I am concerned about the value of the community. Certain areas have gone up over the last couple of years with the sales of properties, but I am finding that we're getting pockets in just throughout all the neighborhood because we don't have a Pacific HOA over there. We're getting a lot of um, absentee owners and businesses, and I'm glad she's going to be there, uh, but want more Pacifics. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. All right, are there any other um, community may like to speak in favor or in opposition or have a question for this petition? All right, seeing and hearing none, Ms. Washington, please come back to the podium. And at this time, please answer those questions that Rose brought before you. Yes, uh, thank you for all the questions. Um, I just want to start off by saying I was raised in Latonia before it became Stonecrest. Um, at 36 years old right now. Um, and I live eight minutes from where I was raised. So I own the home at Pequia Drive. I currently live there as a resident. Um, I've lived there since 2020, um, my husband and I. My husband is a uh, LPN. He will be living on the property as well. He, if you can, what's the LPN? What's the acronym oh, for? Um, I'm sorry, licensed practitioner nurse. Gotcha. Yes. Um, and also comes from a family that has, um, in another state that has procured, uh, resi uh, residential personal care homes. Um, the, who would manage, um, the property, it would be myself and my husband managing the property. And, um, I don't want more than six, um, due to the liability and also the policy is a stone press. Um, and also to procure like a good engagement um, and personal care uh, to a disabled individual. Um, the disabled individual meaning um, they're functional but needing more help like shopping, uh, personal care, uh, trips to their doctor, in a group setting, this is more than just I'll, uh, babysitting an adult. It'll be engagement, field trips, educational um, things going on. Um, um, the value of the home, I'm, I am able to speak some since I am the owner. Um, the value of the home has since 2020 in my 
experience on my block has gone up quite a bit since I purchased the home. Um, and it seems not to be going down according to DeKalb County. Um, and I understand the, um, the concern about the, uh, the little pockets of businesses, not well, businesses or boarding homes, because I live directly right next to one. Um, and that was, that's unlicensed, not supervised and, and actively trying to get something done because it has been a disturbance. And I understand that I, that's the last thing I want to be is a disturbance. I want to be a part of um, a growing problem that's happening in housing individuals with intellect disabilities. And that's a part of, from what I read, um, Stonecrest goal of 2038. Um, I hope I answered everyone's question. You have a home, licensed professionals. Licensed professionals, um, uh, there will be a, uh, I plan to have two 12 hour nursing shifts um, with the LPNs. Um, so 24 hours, they will be on the property. Um, and the age limit will be 55, eight, um, 18 to 55. Um, I'm probably living there, and I will be living there. Um, and I hope, that's, I hope I've covered everything. As well. Um, I do have mm -hmm. a couple of questions. Before I do my questions, are there anywhere else out there that have any additional questions for Ms. Washington? Come up, just come up to the podium. Disablement, when, okay, so I, I understand that. I have nursing people in my family to do that. When you say disablement, are they mentally challenged? Are they on another level? Because we've had that too in the neighborhood. And our community, as you know, has grown where you're seeing a lot of young people and families that I've been over there over 30 some years. I've owned over there and come back and they're, Young ladies are walking around, walking with their babies. It's just more free than we went through a little pocket when the values went down. So I think that's the main thing of the community. I appreciate you want to take care of it. So I'm not challenging you on that, but it's a concern on what type, because we've had people walking around that you're like, who are these people? And I don't know if they were licensed, if they were coded, if it was coded or anything like that. And so I think that's a major thing. And then when you get your value property of praise, I don't know, I got two minutes of praise that the value goes down. I mean, it, it's a big thing over there right now because we don't have an HOA in that area and nobody's fighting it, but we're keeping up the community. And it took a, it took a, it took a season to come back. It took a season. All right. Please. Yes, absolutely. Um, there are being, mo they will be monitored 24-7 um, for the most part. I'm not talking about, um, Individuals that have been institutionalized, um, non-harming, there will be like steps for policy to make sure that these individuals are qualified to be in the home because there's a quality of the care that I do want to offer, that I'm able to offer and also keep the community safe. Um, I hope that answers your question. I hope it answers your question. Okay. All right, so I see we have two more questions. Just come up, come up to the podium. Thank you for taking up time to answer these questions. Just have a just two questions. One is you said that the I'm not sure who is 18 to 55 years old. Is that the residents? Okay, and will they be staying there full time? Yes. Okay, and how is that? How is your facility being used, your home being used now? Do, uh, are there residents there now? Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm the, I'm the only, my husband and I are the only residents there now at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I see we have one more question. Come on up to the podium, ma'am. Ms. Washington, sorry, I didn't get your name uh, to begin with. Um, how much experience have you had in caring for people with disabilities? I have 41 plus years, so I'd like to know how much you have. Um, 
I have uh, 15 years, um, they uh, starting at 15, uh, caring for a child with autism. Um, and uh, from middle school to college, volunteering uh, for the Special, special Olympics um, at the uh, middle school and high school level. And also I, uh, uh, Grady Health System, working in the social work um, space in navigating healthcare for those with um, intellectual disabilities. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Washington, for answering those questions. Um, now I have a, a few questions of my own. Um, some of them you already answered. Um, so my first question um, was it, would you resign on the property? You did say yes. So I can check that off. Um, second question is, do you know if the states require you to have a state license as well for personal care homes? Yes. Um, for the first step was to clear it with the city within which an, I live in. And then I would uh, have that approval and go to the state level for approval for the state. Gotcha. Okay. So once you, if you get approved by the city, then that you will proceed with the state. Yes. Okay. All right. And my next question, do you plan on having any exterior uh, signage outside the property? Uh, yes. Uh, a metal plate next to the door on the left hand side, right gotcha. above the doorbell. Okay. Um, I just want to point out, and we most definitely can send this over to you as well. Um, we have an ordinance that speaks to signs and what signs are permitted and what signs are prohibited um, in Chapter 27. And we most definitely can send it over to you, Ms. Washington, after this meeting, just to make sure that the sign that you are proposing, um, number one, you have to get a permit for that, depending on the size of it, as well as um, making sure, again, that you just abide by the ordinance. Okay. Um, next question, uh, just well, more so like a statement. Um, this is, if this does get approved, I want to make sure that you are aware this license that you get approved by the city is not transferable. So later five, 10 years from now, if you do decide to sell the home and the next tenant, um, desire to open a personal care home, um, you, you have to inform them that they have to go through the same process. So no license are transferable. Okay. All right. And my next question is, do you by chance know the square footage of a home? Yes, it's uh, 1971. Okay. So 1,971 square feet. Yes. All right. Um, approximately how many parking spaces, cars do you think is allowed on the property within the garage and the driveway? Garage and the driveway, eight cars. Without the garage, it's six. Okay. All right. And the um, boarding room of personal care home that you stated resign next to you. Um, you say they are not licensed. No. Do you by chance know the name of it? Is a peer space. Um. I have emailed and called compliance about this. It has, because it was very rowdy, the like 2021, 2022, it has calmed down a bit, but there's some like hanging in front of the door. Um, they stopped parking on the street, but it's they speaking to, um, compliance i understand they've tried to get in touch with the owner but having a hard time and this has been going on for three years now it had like i said there has been some but you can tell that they don't belong if the name you can you can tell and that was initially what attracted my husband and i to the neighborhood like i said i was raised here in latoya i i know what sticks out i understand i know it sticks out and just you can tell that just from the trash, from the people hanging in front of the home, the laundering, the it it just does not belong. Just loud, rowdy, like. And I I I work from home, so I I see what goes on consistently. So it's quiet the majority of the day, but 
when the noise comes, you know where it's coming, where it's coming from. Unfortunately, I live right next to it. Okay. Yeah. And this last statement I'm going to read is from the section I mentioned during the presentation, which is section 4.2.41, which is entitled Personal Care Homes and Child Care Institutions. And the last bullet to point reads, in order to prevent institutionalizing residential neighborhoods or group personal care home located in residential zoning districts may be uh, operate within a thousand feet of any, may not be operating a thousand feet of any other personal care home. And that's why I mentioned, do you know that other personal care home is licensed? So once we conclude this meeting and staff does our analysis, we most definitely will look into our records to see what are other personal care homes in that particular facility. And of course, if they deem to be licensed by the city and the state, and if they are within a thousand feet of your property, um, and then we will inform you of that, but that will be a part of the analysis as well. I just want to make um, make sure that you are aware of that. All right, um, staff, do we have any other questions for Ms. Washington? Hello, Ms. Washington. Hello. I have a question for you. How um, will you handle um, visitors? Is that a 24 hours since you're open, you know, for the for them for 24 hours, how will visitors be controlled? There will be a visiting time hours um, because you still have to have a controlled environment. Um, during the day, daylight hours, um, in certain days, there would be visitors in a lot of time for visitors or and even consulting like family days as well to set the tone. And you have not set those hours yet? No, I have not. No. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Washington, truly appreciate you. I'm at stated the next meeting is scheduled for February 6th, which is the Planning Commission hearing, followed by Mayor and Council, which is scheduled for February 26th. Thank you. All right, you have a good one. All right, so that concludes all the items on the agenda for tonight's um, CPIM Community Planning Information Meeting. I just want to reiterate of the next meetings that this these two petitions will go before the board. Um, it's for February 6, 2024, the Planning Commission here at City Hall in its exact same room at 6 o'clock, followed by the Mayor and Council hearing, which is scheduled for February 26, 2024, in this exact same room at six o'clock. Last but not least, I want to inform you all of our um, upcoming meetings that we have for the comprehensive plan. For those that do not are not aware, um, the city of Stonecrest is now undergoing the process to update our comprehensive plan, or some may know it as the master plan. Um, for the entire city. And this is a time for all stakeholders, business owners, um, property owners, residents, citizens, um, we would like to attend to voice your opinion, what you would like to see in your community, in your city. These are the scheduled meetings that you can attend. Um, so the first meeting for the community meeting is scheduled for Jan January 25th at 6 p.m. The location is Brown's Mill Recreational Center. The second community meeting is for February 8th, 2024, and that will be at 6 p.m. Uh, located at Dope Coffee and Brewery. The third community meeting is February 20th, 2024 at Stonecrest Library at 6 p.m. And then followed by the fourth community meeting, which is February 22nd, 2024, located at Farrington Elementary School at 6 p.m. Followed by the fifth community meeting, um, February 27, 2024, at Browns Mill Recreational Center. Um, followed by the sixth community meeting, February 29th, 2024, at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church at 6 p.m. And the last community meeting is April 4th here at City Hall at 6 p.m. Um, so we encourage everyone to come out, make again, make sure that you are have an input on what you want in your city, what you want in your community, what you want in your district. Um, this is also on the city's website. So if you are not able to capture it now, make sure that you visit the city's website, stonecrestga.gov, and you will see the press relief for all of these dates here. With that being stated, that concludes our January 11th CPIM Community Plan Information Meeting. And you guys have a good one. Happy Thursday.